By the late 1990s, the visual effects industry had shifted away from practical miniatures and optical techniques to a world dominated by digital pipelines. The first wave of 3D-driven blockbusters, from Jurassic Park to Titanic, set the tone for what was possible with computer graphics. Behind the scenes, most of that work depended on silicon graphics workstations running IREX, a Unix-based operating system prized for stability and raw processing power. When Linux matured in the late 90s, studios recognized it as a cheaper, customizable alternative. It carried over the Unix philosophy, but ran on commodity hardware. By the early 2000s, Linux had replaced IREX in most major facilities. Studios like ILM, Water Digital, and Pixar standardized their pipelines on Linux because it scaled better to render farms and could be shaped around custom tools. Key applications like Maya for animation, Houdini for procedural effects, and Nuke for compositing all ran natively on Linux, making them natural choices for studios which were building large and automated pipelines. During this same period, 3ds Max took a different direction. It was released for Windows in 1996 as a successor to DOS-based 3D Studio. 3ds Max thrived in games, VFX for film and TV shows, in addition to advertising. But in VFX, where Linux had become the backbone, its Windows-only design introduced barriers that shaped how far it could go. So why Max wasn't made available on Linux? Linux earned its position in VFX because it faced the technical and economic demands of film production. Workstations could stay running for months without interruption, which is a great advantage when artists leave machines rendering overnight. On the financial side, Linux is basically free, so studios avoided licensing fees altogether, which made a difference when scaling to hundreds or even thousands of nodes. Even cloud computing, when it arrived later, it favored Linux, and providers, in a consistent manner, priced Linux instances lower than Windows. Also, what you have to know about Linux is that it is highly customizable. And taking Ars Linux as an example, you could say you can tweak everything down to the kernels, drivers, and interface. That is, if you know enough. In practice, studios usually lean on Red Hat or CentOS for GPU support and stability, but the key point is that Linux can be adapted to their specific needs, whether it be rendering, modeling, scripting, and so on. And talking about scripting, Python, shell scripts, and C++ libraries all integrate seamlessly in Linux, and pipeline engineers could automate file transfers, asset tracking, and render scheduling without hitting operating system level walls. By the time the Visual Effects Society promoted initiatives like the VFX Reference Platform in the 2010s, Linux was already the culture and the technical standard across most major studios. Three DS Max built its reputation through modeling, animation, and visualization, and studios lead on it because it ran on affordable PCs and could deliver results on short deadlines. Its plugin ecosystem is another big draw. Thinking particles handled procedural destruction. Fume effects became a go-to for fire and smoke, and Krakatoa enabled dense particle rendering, in addition to many, many other plugins. In feature films, Max proved itself in specific roles, like Skyline VFX, which used it for large-scale simulations in the film 2012, and San Andreas in 2015. Blue Studio also relied on it for cinematic trailers that rival feature quality animation. Still, Max usually sat on the edge of pipelines, rather than at their core. Because it only ran on Windows, so studios had to maintain side workstations on parallel workflows to accommodate it. Maya and Houdini on the other hand, which both run natively on Linux, were much more easier to integrate as central applications. For big facilities, the real test of any 3D software wasn't how it performed on an artist's desktop, but how it fit into the larger pipeline. Every stage of production, from animation to effects to rendering, had to pass data cleanly to the next, and automation was essential to keep projects moving. 3ds Max, however, often struggled with these pipeline requirements, and studios needed tools that could run in batch mode and submit jobs 
directly to Linux render farms and handle automation without artist input. Maya and Houdini were built with this in mind, supporting server-side execution that made them better suited for render-heavy workloads. Max, though scriptable through MaxScript and eventually Python, didn't offer the same options in a Linux-based server environment. Its proprietary Max format created another bottleneck, since assets usually had to be exported to FBX or Lambic for compatibility with the rest of the pipeline. Those formats worked, but added extra steps and plug and data often failed to transfer reliably. Rendering exposed the Windows limitation more than anything else. And by the early 2000s, big studios were running farms with thousands of Linux nodes, with 3DS Macs tied to Windows. Productions using it needed separate farms or conversion steps to feed into the Linux render farms. Some studios worked around this by exporting scenes to RenderMan, V-Ray, or Arnold, but each added step increased the chance of mismatched frames or broken effects. At scale, even small inconsistencies became costly. A single film could involve tens of thousands of frames rendered every night, so inefficiencies compounded quickly, and cloud rendering deepened the divide. Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and other provided priced Linux instances lower than Windows ones. The spent productions using Macs sometimes paid more in computing costs compared to Maya or Houdini pipelines, which stayed entirely on Linux. For studios operating on narrow margins, those extra costs matter. As Linux entrenched itself, everything else followed. Open source projects like OpenColor IO, OpenImage.io, and Pixar's USD all assumed Linux first adoption. The VFX reference platform created to unify software builds across the industry, and it was designed around Linux compilers and libraries. Scripting standards also evolved with Linux in mind. Maya and Houdini exposed deep Python APIs on Linux, while Max relied heavily on MaxScript, a Windows centric language. Autodesk added Python support to Macs eventually, but by then, Linux pipelines were already mature and standardized around other tools. There was also momentum that went beyond technology. Studios had invested decades into Linux infrastructure and in-house software. ILM, Weta, and Pixar all built custom render engines and schedules, asset management systems, and proprietary tools that had Linux environments in mind. For facilities like these, adopting 3DS Max meant bending established systems to fit a Windows-only program, which I think was a compromise that few were willing to make. The gap that opened in the early 2000s has persisted. Mayan Houdini remained the standard in feature film, while Max role has diminished over time. In the early 2000s, it was heavily used in game development and architectural visualization, in addition to VFX as well. The truth is, Max is still used in productions, I mean VFX productions, but its use is more regional and studio-specific compared to what it once was. But Autodesk continued to develop it, but in VFX productions, I think its Windows-only roots kept it from becoming the best there is. Of course, there are some other reasons. This limitation combined with long-term Linux culture, I mean in the VFX industry, kind of set its trajectory apart compared to the other industry standard software. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.